kind of social justice I'm passionate about would be environmental change, particularly urban heat islands in low-income communities. I'm passionate about like environmental justice, with, like wildfires and stuff. This issue that I'm passionate about is integrating like urban areas into more environmental activities. The social justice issue that I'm passionate about is the lack of health care um, in Rockaways, our nearest hospital um, that can actually take like a lot of um, emergencies is really small and they don't have the best reviews. So I just want to work on trying to get more health care sources in my community. The social justice issue that I'm passionate about is the fact that undocumented immigrants cannot volunteer in hospitals because they do not possess a social security number. My capstone is Green Line, and it's well, I created it to help like decrease food insecurity in Philadelphia. My initial goal was to kind of redesign a train car on SEPTA, which is our um, like train line here. It was to like make it into a mobile greenhouse. But then I had a meeting with the chief innovator of SEPTA. And she said it was a really big step to accomplish, like for where I am right now. So I took a step back and I redesigned. I like made my own fresh food cases is what I call them. But they're like pods that would hold the vegetables with like shelves. And they would be refrigerated and they would have like water spritzers to keep their vegetables fresh. And um, people could come kind of wanted to take that and make it into something that could benefit the world. Over the course of this program, I studied the ramifications associated with drug criminalization and punitive policy on the addiction crisis throughout my rural community in Arkansas. So I started to look around my room, you know, think really hard about what I was going to do for the next eight months. And that's when it really hit me. I saw a bunch of water bottles in my room and I was like, yeah, that's right, microplastics. Here's a graph that I made to represent the cycle that microplastics are in. We start out with the human consumption. This is the stage where we use the plastics. Then, after not disposing them properly, some of these plastics end up in our waters. These plastics then decompose into microplastics. After decomposition, the plastics can be found in sand and other sources of food for fish. The fish then unknowingly eat these plastics, and some of it lingers in their body for the rest of their lives. These same fish are then caught and eaten by humans. All of the plastic that was in the fish is then transferred to us. There are many researchers that are trying to find the effects of microplastics in the human body, but it is speculated that these plastics can cause health issues and potential diseases. How can I help? After doing my research, I knew there was a problem in my community. Now I needed a solution to solve it. 
So I decided to contact some of my local conservation and environmental organizations in Florida. That is when we decided to have a park cleanup. So I got everyone that I could for my job to come clean. We had a table to educate the public on microplastics and we collected over 18 pounds of trash. Overall, I think we had a really good time. What about the community? After having the park cleanup, I needed to know how our community felt about certain things concerning microplastics, so I sent out surveys. In this survey, I asked about how many water bottles do people use in a week. The numbers vary. The highest water bottle usage was 40 bottles and the lowest was 2. The average weight of a 20 ounce plastic bottle is 23.83 grams. If you multiply this by 40, as said in the last slide, you will come out with 953.2 grams, also known as 2.1 pounds. This 2.1 pounds times 31 will have you coming out with 65.1 pounds in a whole month. You will get 781.2 pounds of plastic in a year. This is the same weight as a whole vending machine. 